Hi, my name is Angela Sutton. In this sequence of videos, I'll show you techniques to build functional safety and reliability into your FPGA-based design. The videos in this series cover the most common FPGA functional safety issues. The videos show you where in the design it will be the most important to take steps to improve functional safety. The videos show specific methods that you can deploy to both protect and monitor combinatorial logic, registers, clocks, routing, memories, IP, state machines, and IOs. So let's get started. Let's discuss the nature of functional safety issues in FPGAs and what we can do during the design process to address them. The need for functional safety pervades electronic systems that surround us. These systems need to exhibit resistance to failure and operate with high uptime. Failure of a military, aerospace, medical, industrial or automotive device can cause life-threatening results. Communication systems need to maintain high uptimes so that the quality of service delivered is high. In this video, I'll introduce you to some handy logic synthesis methodologies that give your FPGA systems the functional safety in operation that you need. These methodologies are available today as part of the Simplify Premier FPGA Synthesis software product and address applications where loss of communications, control, or the loss of continuous operation cannot be tolerated. As such, they are in use across automotive, industrial, medical, military, and space industries, as well as the communications market. These markets have other needs, including quick IP integration, fast turnaround, and high performance, low cost results that are also addressed by the Simplify Premier package. However, this video's focus is purely how to address high reliability and functional safety in your design and how Simplify Premier can help make that easy. Of course, no one wants their electronic system to fail. FPGAs are used frequently to implement critical functions in electronic systems. So making sure that the FPGA and its surrounding system operate safely and reliably is very important. It turns out that high energy particles, that is radiation, present in the atmosphere or at ground level can present a big problem to an FPGA-based system, impacting functional safety and uptime. When a single charged alpha particle or high energy neutron hits silicon, it can knock thousands of electrons loose and create ions, causing electronic noise and transient signal spikes. An unwanted transient signal, such as this, occurring in the combinatorial logic of an FPGA is referred to as a single event transient, or SET. SETs do not necessarily cause lasting damage to the device, but can cause lasting problems to any system which cannot recover from the error induced by the transient. If one or more of these transients is clocked into a register or stored in a memory element, then the incorrect signal value will now have been captured and will persist in the design. This act of capturing an incorrect value is known as a single event upset or SEU. The error is now in effect retained by the circuit and can be propagated across other parts of the system, potentially causing all sorts of trouble, especially in circuits with synchronous feedback. As we'll see later, if an error propagates inside a state machine, that is an FSM, it could cause an undefined state to be reached and a complete lockup of the operation of any circuitry that the FSM controls. The good news is that there are automated ways to detect and minimize these types of failure. One important step that you can take is to have your logic synthesis tool automatically build in error detection and mitigation circuitry. Clearly, SEU mitigation, that is the detection and correction of radiation-induced errors, is and has been a requirement for aerospace and defense applications for many years. But did you know that in Denver, Colorado, USA, at only 5,000 feet in elevation, 
Your FPGA circuit is about four times more likely to be affected by a radiation event than it would be at sea level. As FPGA process technologies advance, the problem gets worse. As the die shrinks, the critical charge required to upset a transistor reduces. 16, 20 and 28 nanometer devices with reduced core voltages and higher transistor switching speeds are more susceptible to SEUs than they ever have been before. And we're already seeing SEUs occur at ground level. As more electronics for things such as MRI, engine control, braking systems and collision avoidance find their ways into automobiles, medical equipment and industrial control applications, there is little to no margin for allowing SEUs to result in human harm. For communications equipment whose failure might not necessarily endanger lives, an SEU can negatively impact quality of service. To better understand what to do, let's take a quick look at the FPGA internals. An FPGA comprises building blocks that include combinatorial logic blocks, CLBs, that is logic and registers implemented, for example, but via lookup tables, and DSP elements. It also includes dedicated memory primitives known as block RAMs or BRAMs. Driving the operation are digital clock module generators, DCMs, that fuel the clock network of the FPGA via global clock routing. Also present on the die are input-output buffers, IOBs, that clock data onto and off the chip. Different methods and techniques can be applied to protect each of these FPGA primitives from radiation-induced errors. These techniques detect the presence of the error and automatically correct the problem in hardware. For example, we can design in redundancy and error correction via a technique known as triple modular redundancy or TMR. Alternatively, we can detect the error using a duplicate with compare DWC function to trigger software-based or other error correction such as memory scrubbing. We can even tell the software to select and use special error correcting memories, known as ECC RAMs, in critical parts of the design. Add to this the need to protect common, higher level macros in the design, for example, finite state machines or IP blocks. These macros present a different challenge. Finite state machines or FSMs comprise registers and logic with feedback that needs a special SEU mitigation. There are several special techniques that we can apply here that are dealt with in more detail in the video Safeguarding FSMs. And these include Hamming 3 error detection and correction, as well as the implementation of special safe and safe case FSMs. As for IP blocks, a big challenge here may be that we may not be able to see inside the, the uh, internals of the encrypted IP block. Or even if we can, we may not be able or at liberty to alter the internals of the IP to better protect it and monitor it. Just what can we do to protect untouchable IP such as this? TMR-based redundancy can be a big help, as can software-based error correction. Simplified Premier Software helps you to build in the circuitry that you need to mitigate SEU errors protecting finite state machines so that they don't lock up or malfunction if an incorrect or undefined state is entered when an SEU occurs. It also automates the implementation of redundant circuitry through a method called TMR. This method self-corrects a problem in combinatorial logic, IOs, memories, registers, clock networks, and IP. Memories can be corrected also by instructing the software to make special use of available ECC RAM primitives on the die. Or the software can create error flags that drive, for example, memory scrubbing actions. Your strategy can also involve the creation of error monitors that flag the occurrence of an SEU and that are used to trigger on or off chip software based error correction. Please feel free to view the other videos in this series that tell you how and when to deploy these techniques in your design. Please feel free to visit synopsis.com slash FPGA safety to view the additional videos in this series or to discuss and evaluate Synopsis functional safety solutions.